If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org. Lakeland PBS presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Production funding of Common Ground is made possible in part by First National Bank Bemidji, continuing their second century of service to the community, a partnership for generations. Member FDIC. Welcome to Common Ground. I'm your host, Scott Knudsen. In this episode, Rich Taggart of Wadena grants a tour of his eclectic history museum. Then author Jim Krigler, a Vietnam veteran helicopter pilot, begins a canoe journey of the Mississippi to raise awareness of Gold Star families. Today we're going to give a tour on some of my items in my antique building. We just like collecting old stuff and we started small and just kept buying and buying and all of a sudden we had a lot of stuff. I think the first thing I start with is this neat old camera that was used from the old west days. It's the one that you hold up the flash and it goes woof and you see a lot of them in the old western movies still. And we have the old full size Elvis which we got in Chicago. Carol and I go to Chicago every November to a huge antique show. And we bought Elvis there, and we bought a few other items there. We bought that silent movie projector from 1906 in Chicago. Lots of posters from different Elvis movies. And then we got a popcorn machine that we got just 20 some miles west of us in Perm. It didn't work when I received it, but I had a gentleman repair it, and we have made a couple batches of popcorn with it. So, And then this projector here came from we got it in Brainerd and it came from Minneapolis. Back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s was huge for these wall boxes. You'd go into a restaurant, you sit down in your booth and there was a wall box and you could put your nickel or dime in there and play your favorite songs on the jukebox that was over in the corner. You're not gonna see very many mixers around with three beaters. Of course, everything is standard with two beaters. And this thing here is a flower sifter which you sift your flour and up here you have your... This is our first stove we bought, and this is made in 1929. And then we have a bread making machine here from 1904. And it just purchased this a week ago. And all the parts are inside for making bread. But probably the coolest thing on this wall is that vacuum cleaner. It's from 1911. And you take the top handle and you pull up on that to suck the dirt up into there. And it has a filter system in there. But I think we all realize it would have been a lot quicker to use a broom and a dustpan. But this was the start of the vacuum cleaner business. And this is a neat round old stove from 1899. It's bigger than most wood stoves. You see most of them are 12 or 14 inches and this is a 20 inch. So this was made for a bigger building. And it's definitely all usable. It, every, there's no cracks or holes or anything in there. You can just use it by just putting the stove pipe on there. And of course we have some nice old pictures. A few of them like Little Richard and Bobby Lee and them. Carol and I went and saw them and they we lucky enough to get them autographed and really easy to visit with and that. And we got a couple of sinks. There's a lot of cloth foot bathtubs around, but very few of them are in a four foot. Most of them are five and a half or six. This is a four foot. And then we have this toilet that's on the wall, which easy flushers because they got them high up. And that came from Great Falls, Montana. Seen it advertised and I bought it over the phone and I have a friend that has a store out in Great Falls. So the man delivered it there. And, and then later I picked up the product when I met that gentleman from the store. This is a couple of neat TVs by Philco. They came out with these in the 50s thinking this was the, gonna be the big thing. And it actually ended up bankrupting Philco. They went bankrupt over these TVs. They went over so poorly 
and the quality of the TV wasn't that good. And I have a little article that I picked up, I put on here from the, off the internet showing what happened, but they filed bankrupts and what have you. Anyway, and then this is a neat pho little phonograph here, which has got the cylinder, and it's in pretty darn nice shape for 100 years old. And we've played it a few times, but mainly just here for looks, so. And then my wife, Carol, when she was in high school, she kept all our high school buttons and little odds and ends, a little jewelry and all that stuff, so we have it all on display. When I was a senior in high school, we went on a bus trip to Minneapolis, to the University of Minnesota, a school trip, and every, everybody that got off the school bus, they handed us a four pack of cigarettes when we were seniors in high school. Today, they'd have a heart attack if they passed out of cigarettes to anybody. This is a cream separator that is one of my favorite items in the whole building. It's a cream separator with a square tub. I, I, I grew up on a farm, and I've seen a lot of cream separators, but I've never seen one with a square tub. They're all always around. And this thing is made before electricity on the farms. They have a treadmill. You can either run it with a dog or a goat or a sheep. All it does is stand there and run, and it turns the separator, and it separates the cream from the milk. And then I actually have another treadmill right behind it that runs a washing machine from 1888. It's not in quite as nice a shape, but this is a butter churn that actually makes 17 gallons of butter. This is actually was made to run on a treadmill also. You could either stand here and rock it to make your butter, or you could have a treadmill like this for $16, you could buy the treadmill. This was made in 1877. And then right, right behind that is an apple press. And that's from 1860s. And this is made for making wine or apple juice, or you just put your apples in there, turn the crank, smash the apples, it go down in that little tub, you slide it over here, and you turn the crank to smash all the juice out, and it has a little hole on this tray, and it runs, your juice would run in there, and this is kind of a neat singer from 1896. The back here is just some washing machines. The cool one is this one right here. This has an electric motor on it, and this was made in 1918. And there was not a lot of electricity in 1918, so I would assume it was a fairly well-to-do family that owned this washing machine. I got a nice organ we bought in Wisconsin about five, six years ago, and it was actually made in 1879. And I'm not an organ player, but we've had a few people here that have played it, and it plays very well. I can, I can show you the noise it makes. And that's, I don't play. But for a 140-year-old machine, I think it's pretty awesome. And you see a few radios around like this. It's before AM, actually. It's a very old radio, has no volume control. If it's too loud, you just turn it off the station a little bit. And you see a few of these radios around, but you see very few stands. The stand is your speaker. This is a trunk that uh, we bought quite a few years ago, and it's a humpback, and it's full with old ladies' clothes, and of course we got the mothballs just like they had in the old days. And Carol, we just found out one thing about trunks that have the dome on. They was normally owned by the rich people. They came out with the idea if they have a dome top, their trunk always got put on top of the pile and all the trunks with the flat tops was on the bottom. So these people decided, oh, we'll make a dome, our trunk will be on the top. It won't get damaged, so. And then of course we have our 50s soda fountain area, which I'm quite proud of this. We keep thinking we're done with it. We got everything we can have, and I'll be darned I find something else I gotta squeak in or put in, but it's getting to the point it's full. Monarch ice cream was huge in Widena for years, and it went out of business probably back in the 50s or 60s, but we ended up with a few posters, and I wanna make sure we keep that around for people to remember about Monarch. This is the back of a 1956 Chevy. Just took the trunk off and built a seat in there, and it's got the lights hooked up, and kind of fits in with the soda fountain. This jukebox, was purchased in 1998. It was the very first item that we purchased in this building. And we played somewhere between four and 5,000 records on this jukebox. And I'll come out here at night and I'll just come over and punch buttons. I don't even care what song comes up and it plays awesome. It's a 1954 model yep. and it's got awesome sound for 63 years old. 
That bicycle up there is probably one of the coolest items too in the building. It's made in 1898. It has wooden rims, wooden chain guard, and a wooden chain back fender. And then we have our pop machines, that we have a Pepsi that we just purchased about a month ago. It's a very rare one, you don't see. That's the only one I've ever seen like that. And then we have a few other Coke machines. This is somewhat common, and this is a smaller model. And you don't see a lot of that one, so that's probably got more value than all the rest put together. And then we have all our signs. We got s and green stamps. And this is another neat item. Before they had the quart cans of oil, they would use, they had, this is what they had in the service stations. They would use a deal like this. They come over here, put that on there, fill up your quart, and then put the cap on. And as soon as you put, the, take your quart away, it would come back and all your grips would grip back into your container. And then you just put this in your car and you don't have the quart can to throw away. And then we go into my gas pumps. And this particular pump came from a small town by Bluegrass, just northeast of Widena. And it came from the central store, and this had a 34-volt motor in there that ran off a windmill charger. And then we have this drag line that came from the 50s Carnival. You had your jackknives or silver dollars or all that laying out there, and you put your quarter in there and you turn the crank, and I haven't got them set up to work right now, but they do work. This is an ice cream cart that we bought from Vancouver in Canada about two and a half years ago. So you have dry ice in here and you have all your treats in here. And in the front, it has a door to put all your little uh, papers and what have you for that. And you're going down the road and let, let, them, know, let them know you're coming. And the next thing we're gonna look at is our jail. And these are original jail bars from Widena. And then inside the jail, we have a 1800 jail that we went down to Ohio. It's two cells, they have a fold down bunk, and then in the doors, it has a little slot for putting their food through when you feed them. This is the craps table. It was made when it was illegal to shoot crap. So on this table, it has cranks on it. So if the feds was coming, you could take this apart and hide it within two or three minutes. Pretty cool. And then that's an old bathtub from the old cowboys. And you can realize back in them days, uh, everybody was a little smaller than they are today to fit in that. The oldest thing in our building is that fork right back there, and I have no idea how old it is, but it's got wooden times on it. It's wrapped with leather, and it's a six-time fork, and it's got to be 150, 200 years old. Well, if anybody is interested in coming and booking or looking at our collection, uh, just email us, and we'll see if the time works for you and I, and like I say, there's no charge, and we enjoy showing it if we have the time to do it. I love coming out here in the evenings and putzing around. Just sometimes I just come here, turn the jukebox on and sit in a chair and listen, you know, look around. It's, it's, it's I enjoy that. Late April of 2017, Vietnam veteran helicopter pilot and author Jim Krigler invited me to film him at Itasca State Park as he began a canoe journey of the Mississippi River. His endeavor was to raise awareness of Gold Star families. American Gold Star families are immediate relatives of members of the U.S. Armed Forces who have been killed in combat or in support of certain military activities. The air at Itasca was just above freezing, but Jim's mood was warm. All right, let's bring her down. It's named after Named after my daughter Libby, beautiful girl, sometimes cantankerous. Yeah, we're gonna fit everything in there quite nicely. All right, we're going. Follow me. Oh, Bob, how you, oh my goodness. Oh, easy. <laughs> That's okay, how's it going? Brother. Good to see you, man. Uh, I can help, give me a help there. Uh, you know what? If you grab a couple of paddles and follow me down, appreciate it. Well, that's a member of the Vietnam Helicopter Pilots Association. He came up to uh, wish me off. His name is Bob Godar. He's, uh, I think he's down in Park Rapids. It's a beautiful morning out here. I think it's a crisp 38 degrees. 
springtime in Minnesota, you couldn't ask for a better time to be out in the woods. All right, halfway. It's all downhill from here. Jim Kriegler, sir. Kelly Bold. Kelly, nice to meet you. Good morning. Oh, I'm honored. Oh, was I on the news? Yeah, you were on the channel line. Oh, that, I hope right? I sounded good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good, well. About two minutes. Oh, I didn't expect you guys out here, but I can't tell you how appreciative I am of this. And uh, one of the things I've discovered uh, is, you know, there's no database of Vietnam Gold Star families. And uh, so I'm dependent on the VFWs as I go down and maybe the American Legions. Uh, you've, you've put the flags up here. We got this beautiful morning here. Uh, you know, I'm just honored to, that you guys would all show up. I didn't expect this. I expected Bruce and I was, I was gonna apologize to you. Now I gotta apologize to everybody. Oh, I got a poppy for my hat too. That's, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I'll put this poppy in there. I actually met with a priest the uh, day before yesterday and I was in downtown Chicago, and his name was Father John, and uh, he, he gave me a blessing that was uh, beyond blessings. I mean, I've got angels above me and on the side of me and an archangel behind me protecting me, according to Father John. So, uh, but uh, if I could just say a few words, if you guys don't mind. Yeah, Lord, uh, we appreciate this beautiful day, and as we begin this uh, journey, uh, we hope that we can touch the lives of uh, many, many Gold Star families, especially Vietnam Gold Star families. And uh, I appreciate any support that you can give me along the way. And this is a good example of that support. These veterans have come out here to, uh, to support me in Jesus' name. Thank you. So the beautiful 38 degree water here. Yeah, it's the beginning of the Mississippi. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of water. This is the beginning of the trip. And I'll put my paddle in, start paddling right there. And first day is going to be a difficult one. Uh, but I don't really care what the sacrifice is because it's nothing compared to what, what our soldiers and, a, and our Gold Star, especially Vietnam Gold Star families have been through. So I'm willing to make the sacrifice. And for those of you that are watching this, this video in the future, please find it in your hearts to reach out and contact a Gold Star family and thank them for that sacrifice because every paddle stroke that I make on this river for the next 2,250 miles is gonna to be to honor those folks. And I would very much appreciate your support. So let's get this show on the road. It's gotta be in this picture too, Mark. I'm Jim Kriegler. I'm a ex-Vietnam helicopter pilot. And in 1972, I was in combat in Vietnam and I had a wonderful roommate named First Lieutenant Tom Shaw. And uh, Tom and I became very close. He became my mentor, like an older brother. And the two of us had a pact between us that if one of us was killed in combat, that the other one would escort their body back to the United States. And I was both honored and burdened with that uh, duty. But it was the first time that I met a Gold Star family it was in May of 1972 when I met Tom's wife and his mom and his dad and his brothers and his sisters. Although it was the toughest mission for me during the war, it wasn't even 10 times as tough as it was for that family and all the rest of the Vietnam Gold Star families that lost sons in that, in that war. And during the last five years, I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of Gold Star families. And the story's always the same, Scott. Uh, it's always, we received a devastating telegram or a knock on the door. And about a week or so later, we got a coffin with our son in it and a neatly folded American flag. We buried our son, and then we never talked about it again. I've heard that so many times, I can't tell you. So I decided to do something about it. I decided to go find all the Gold Star families in my community that I could. I didn't find them all, but I found some of them in the surrounding area, and I gave about 20 honor coins out to those families. And with each one, I put that coin in their hand and told them I thanked them and uh, honored their sacrifice and that I hope they'd keep that coin and remember that there are thousands of Americans that appreciate and honor their sacrifice. 
None of them could speak to me. They were all overcome with emotion. It took us both a minute. I'm getting emotional just talking about it. It took us a minute to recoup our, our emotions. Uh, and then they were able to talk to me. But the reason they got so emotional is that in 45 years, no American citizen has thanked them for that sacrifice. 45 years. So I'm on a mission today, and I'm doing something totally audacious. Most 67-year-old guys would never consider paddling for 2,250 miles to make a statement, but I'm making a statement, and I want to wake up some people in America, and I want to cause a movement to happen. I would like those of you that are watching this video to go to your VFW or go to your American Legion and ask them, who are the Gold Star families in our community? especially the Vietnam Gold Star families. Who are they? How can I get in touch with them? And go out and get a 49 cent stamp and an envelope and a little piece of paper and write them a thank you note for that sacrifice. Tell them how much you appreciate the freedoms that you have today because their son or daughter died for those freedoms. And make a difference in these people. They deserve some honor. I'm a little nervous right now because it's like a race you know, you get nervous right before a road race, so it's kind of like you want to get yourself going, but I don't want to go too fast because it's more important to have everything that I want on board, you know, because you're going to, I can't stop at a store. So hopefully I'll be a, an expert in this canoe in about 30 miles, and uh, hopefully I don't tip it in front of you. So, <laughs> we'll see. This is a book that I just finished. It's about my time in Vietnam. I am donating some of the proceeds. I got to pay for the book, but besides that, I'm donating the proceeds to uh, my charity, 501c3, American Huey 369. The book is called Mission of Honor. And, you know, mistakes in life, they make the best stories. And this is about mistakes that I made as a young man and meeting my roommate, Tom Shaw, that I mentioned earlier, and uh, a sort of a moral compass that Tom gave me in life that I've used to uh, navigate through those forks in the road that we go through. And it's also about my time in Vietnam, and it has a message for America. So if you're interested, missionofhonor.org uh, is a website. You can buy it there. You can also buy it on Amazon. And again, uh, proceeds go to a very, very good cause. So appreciate your support there. These are my snacks. Yep. Hey, Bruce, I don't have enough to give one to everybody, I'm sorry, but I'm going to give one to you for the ride, and I'm giving one to you for coming down here. Maybe you could pass it around to these guys. I'm not the hero in this book. Uh, somebody else is. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. You know, when you're 20, they're usually not little mistakes, they're big mistakes. And I was 20, and they turned into, for me anyway, a moral, uh, kind of a moral dilemma. And I had a, my roommate who was killed in action over there was a wonderful guy and, and he shared with me his moral compass on life. And I don't mind telling you what it was. Uh, what he said was, we're all coming to forks in the road of life and, and which fork we choose determines what our life's gonna be. And the easy fork is not always the one we gotta take. So you gotta have courage to take that fork. You gotta do the right thing. You gotta focus on what's right, not what's wrong. You gotta tell the truth. You gotta be truthful to yourself and to other people. You gotta trust in God. And that's his compass. And he gave that to me. And I've used it in my life and I use it to solve my own moral dilemma. But he's the hero in that book, mm. not me. But thank you for coming, cool. sir. You, you thank bet. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate all you guys coming. Thanks, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Here. Well, we're, we're brothers. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. test my water, make sure it works. Works great. Nice. Well, I'm gonna make
make a difference in some lives of some gold star families, buddy. All right, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Join us next week on Common Ground. If you have an idea for Common Ground in North Central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call 218-333-3014. To watch Common Ground online, visit lptv.org and click Local Shows. To order episodes or segments of Common Ground, call 218-333-3020. Production funding of Common Ground was made possible in part by First National Bank Bemidji, continuing their second century of service to the community, a partnership for generations, member FDIC. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org.